All right, what's good YouTube? We're back again with another video and I think you guys are gonna like this one. I know a bunch of you have been asking for something like this for a while now, but in this video, I'm gonna show you guys every step you need to know to record in FL Studio and basically how to create a recording template for you guys to use. So in this video, I'm gonna take you from A to B, A being you have absolutely no idea how to use FL or record in it, and B, you're gonna leave this video knowing exactly how to record and all of the extra steps in between that you would need to make a full song. Also in this video, like I said, we're gonna be making a template for you guys to record in. So I recommend you to follow the steps in the video and actually make your own but i'm gonna have a free version of this template down in the description below available for you guys to download so if you do want to grab that go ahead and find that in the description but before we do jump in this video if you guys could go down hit that like button for me and if you're not familiar with the channel already i'm an engineer and a producer and i make videos like this all the time just showing you guys how to record by yourself and at your own home studio if you like content like this make sure you go down hit that subscribe button but other than that let's jump into fl studio all right so the first thing we're gonna go over is how to actually set up your fl studio for recording so the first thing you're gonna actually want to do so right click this button and if you're recording audio from your mic all you really want is this audio button to be clicked everything else can be off if you right click it you could keep it open but you also want all of these checked recording starts at playback disarm on stop and enable recording markers these quantized settings you don't really have to mess with i just leave mine at default but basically all you have to take from this is ensure that you have audio selected and then all three of these options all right and the first thing you want to do is create a beat track and in fl studio 21 there's a huge new feature where you just right click this little plus button right here and it's gonna auto link this mixer channel to insert number one in your mixer. And basically what the linking does is anytime you drag any audio in here, it's gonna automatically be routed to this mixer track. So you could click F2 on your keyboard. We'll name this beat all caps. And I usually make my beat track red, except that and now we have a beat track. So anytime you drop a beat in here, you know exactly where it's gonna be routed. It's gonna be routed over here to the beat. Another thing I like to do is right click on the mixer track and go to dock to left. This way it's just docked over to the side so we always know where it's at. All right, the next thing we have to do is actually create a recording track. So I'm gonna right click this plus button again and now we're routed over to insert number two. So we're gonna click insert two, F2 on our keyboard and we're gonna call this recording. Usually a lot of people make the recording track red as well, but we're just gonna make it yellow today. I guess it's olive. Do that, click accept, and boom, now we have a recording track. Okay, now we have to make some vocal tabs, so I'm gonna right click this twice. Now we have insert three and four. We're gonna go to number three, F2, and we're gonna name this main vocal. And I'm just gonna make this like some kind of blue. And then with this one right here, we're gonna go ad libs. And we just make this like green. So now we have an ad lib and a main vocal track. And then what I like to do, since there's no like big separation between the recording and the main vocal, you right click on your main vocal and add a separator. So now you can see your recording track is separated from your actual vocal tabs. And now this is usually the easy part. You can either add a preset or just go and add your own mixing plugins if you know how to mix yourself. But I'm going to go ahead and add my Yeet preset just because it's my most popular preset. So I'm going to go ahead and add that on real quick. All right, so as you can see, I loaded up my main vocal preset and the ad lib track. It did rename it just because the preset auto renames it. But now we have to set up our delay bus and our reverb bus. Now, what a bus is, basically, it's going to send the signal that's coming into this track to another channel. And on that channel, there's going to be 100% of the reverb. Just allows you to have more control. You can control the reverb better. It's not on one track where you have to kind of adjust the mix every time. But it just makes it a lot easier to see where the reverb is actually coming from. So an easy way to do this is we'll just take insert number five. And usually what I like to do is dock it over to the right and then we'll take insert number six and dock it over to the right as well and then you could just rename this one by clicking f2 we'll call it reverb and we'll call this one delay and before you actually add any reverb or delay usually what i like to do is click my vocal and now we have to actually route it so you click the track that you want the reverb to be applied to and you just left click this button once and we'll left click the delay as well and then you would control the amount of reverb with these knobs down here so we're going to bring it all the way down because we'll mix that in later but now we actually want to add some reverb to this. So you could either add Fruity Reverb or any reverb plugin of your liking. But with my Yeet preset, I do have a reverb bus preset. All right, so I have my reverb and delay bus set up. And we have our main vocal routed over to it. But we forgot to do the ad lib. So let's left click, left click, and bring this volume all the way down. Okay, so now we're basically set up to record. So we're going to set up our record track. And basically the whole reason you even make a record track is so you could record your dry signal. So if you were to actually record on this track, you'd click record and it would record your voice. But it would apply all of these plugins to your voice and you don't really want that there's two ways to avoid that first one is by making a recording track like we did this is usually the easiest way and the most popular way but when you make a recording track what you have to make sure to do is click control and click your main vocal 
this button down here and that'll send the input from your recording track into the vocal so when you actually go to hear yourself and you hear your input you can hear the effects from your vocal track now there's also a second way to do this you could actually just record from this exact track but one thing people always forget to do is you have to click this button right here and make sure you're set to external input only this will make sure that when you record your raw vocal is being recorded and not your vocal with all the effects on it. And the reason you don't want this is because if you record your vocal with all of your effects on it and you want to change the effects later, you really can't do that. But with your raw vocal, you always can. And now we're on to the recording stage. Now the recording stage is always usually the longest part, or if you're a really good freestyler, sometimes the quickest part. For example, I'm going to show you guys this clip of Uzi that I just found where he was actually finding the chorus for EXO Tour Life. And as you can see, he really just plays the beat and waits until he finds some kind of melody in his head and then waits for those lyrics to come along with it. This is usually the way I like to freestyle my songs, kind of just come up with the melody and then start applying lyrics that I just hear in my head and just keep recording until we find something that's good, exactly like how Uzi did it. I don't really care if you cry. I don't really care because you lied. I don't really, almost, I don't really care if you cry. But there's also another way to do it. Some people like to write down lyrics. I don't like this because it's always been hard for me to take lyrics that I've written down and try to fit it into a song or a particular BPM. Freestyling has just been always a little bit easier for me. But I'm going to show you guys quickly what that would sound like. All right, so I got this beat right here called Supernova by my boy Prod Mo Beats. I'll have him linked down in the description below. He makes some crazy stuff. But when you drag in an MP3, sometimes you'll have the silence in the beginning. And what you're going to do is click S on your keyboard, hold Alt, and then you can just drag it out and just go to the very beginning of the sound. It looks like right here for us. We're going to go to 145. Then we might be able to trim a little more out of that. Perfect. So now it should be completely synced up. Now, if you have a WAV file, it should be a lot easier and there should not be that little silence in the beginning. And then also what you need to do, FL Studio 21, they finally added a gain knob right here. So we're going to pull this down just so we have a little bit of room to mix the beat later and finally master that later as well. So if the BPM isn't clearly labeled in the beat like this, you might have to find that. And an easy way to do that is just play the beat and use this tempo tapper right here. Or you could just adjust the BPM until you see the main transients lining up with the actual beat markers. So as you can see, you set it to 145 and this main transient is lining up with a beat marker on the one. And then we got to find the key. Now, if you have perfect pitch, you can find the key like that. You could ask the producer for the key. If you have auto-tune, auto-tune comes with auto key where you just play the beat and it'll automatically find it for you. There's also a bunch of websites that you can find on the internet that will find this for you as well. Mom! All right, so it looks like it's F minor, and now we're gonna actually get set up to record. So we're gonna be using the recording track, and all we have to do is set the input. So in FL Studio 21, as long as your mixer tracks are linked to the playlist channels, you can just click this button right here and select input one. And then, like I said, just make sure you're always on external input only, and you're gonna have this set to when armed. So whenever you arm the track, you'll be able to hear yourself. So I'm gonna turn the gain down on my mic because you wanna make sure whatever input is coming in from your mic, always have that a bit lower because you could always bring volume up, but you can't fix any input that's clipping. Let's turn this down. All right, to me personally, like I said, I don't like to use that recording track, so I'm just gonna record straight from the track. I just set my input on this, and then we arm it, and you can hear yourself, and now what we gotta do is mix in some of our effects, so we're gonna click the vocal, and just slowly bring up our reverb. Yeah. My head, I see you. And then the cool part about having a reverb bus is you can add an EQ to it, and kind of EQ out any of the sounds. You can also add, for example, like a stereo imager, I'll use this waves one to just make the reverb super wide. So now it sounds like this. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Let's mix in some of our delay. Yeah. I'm using Valhalla delay and I have it on ping pong. There we go. Now we're set. Let me mute the reverb and delay. So now we're set and all you have to do is click R on your keyboard and you can record. So let's see if we can record a little, a little freestyle. She took my soul. She took my heart. She took my soul. All right, so as you can see, what I'm doing here is the punch in method. So I got one little bar down right here. And as soon as I click record again, FL Studio is going to automatically group this track and make another one right underneath it. So you don't have to worry about making an A and B track. You could just have them grouped underneath each other, which is great.
Another great thing in FL Studio 21 is, for example, say you have a part that you want to remove a little bit of, you could just drag it like this. And then if you drag this little corner piece, you have a little fader so you could actually have it fade out. So now we could record a little extra part on top of that. Yeah, I need you to move. I thought I told you this before, but I need you to move. All right, so we have a little chorus down. So the next thing we have to do is the ad libs. So if you want to do the ad libs, obviously, if you have the record track, what you would do is enable your record track and then go to the record track and click control left click on the ad lib track. So now we're on the ad lib track. As you can see, it sounds a lot different. Um, I'm going to take out some of the bass. So it sounds like this. And then we have to add in our reverb again on this. So let's bring in some reverb. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Make it real thin like this, and then maybe a little louder. But like I said earlier, I don't like recording on the record track, so, so we're going to take this off and just record on the actual ad lib track. Just make sure you set your input. Also, make sure it's set to external input only. So let's record some ad libs. Yeah, I thought I told you that my heart is way too cold. Damn, it'll push you to the side, that's how it go. Whoa, whoa. Can you tell me how you feel? Cause I need you, yeah, I need you the most Yeah, I need you the most Yeah, I need you the most I thought I told you this before But I need you the most Yeah, I need you the most Yeah, I need you the most I thought I told you this before But I need you the most Alright, that was actually pretty easy to do We got that first try, so let's listen to how it sounds So yeah, I'm liking how that sounds. That's pretty much it. That's the recording phase. And that is really all you need to know to record. If you ever need to duplicate any of these, you could right click in the playlist channel and just click clone and then just clone whatever you want here. The patterns part, you could pretty much ignore it. That's like any of your, if you're making like drum patterns, so you can take that off. Audio clips, if you want to duplicate over your voice, I usually take that off because most of the time I don't want to duplicate over my voice. Automations don't need that on. Effects and group tracks. We could keep that. I'm going to take off the grouped tracks because we don't need that. That'd just be tracks like this on the bottom. So you duplicate that over. And then just make sure you reapply external input only. And then you're all set. It also does it in here. Then you can hold alt and left arrow on your keyboard to bring it over like right here. So it's next to your vocals. That's if you have to duplicate it and maybe make some quick adjustments. So now we move on to the mixing and mastering. This thing's already pretty much mixed how I want it. I'm not going to spend too much time mixing the rest, but at this stage, you would usually adjust your levels, add any stereo effects that you might want if you want anything wider and stuff like that. But everything that's playing right now, the beat, the recording track, vocals, everything gets routed over to the master at some point. So everything, as you can see, it's routed over to the master at some point. Now with mastering, mastering is usually one of the hardest parts for people to understand because it's a lot of ear training and understanding what needs to be adjusted and what doesn't. Now to quicken this process for you guys, I did create the final step master, which is something I use on pretty much all of my mixes. There's a Waves version and a stock version, but if you want to grab that, that's just a quick, simple way to add it to your master and pretty much just let it sit and it'll adjust your music for you. So here's what the Waves version of the final step master actually looks like. Got a parallel split with the J37. This is just like an old tape machine that they used for mastering. I think think back in the day, but they made a virtual version of it basically. And it just sounds really good on mixes. And I have it in a parallel split that basically what this does is it has your normal signal without the plugin on it. And then it has the wet signal with the plugin effect on it. And you slowly mix in that wet signal until it sounds good. Then we have an L3 limiter, and this is just some uh, multi-channel limiting right here. You can control any of the sounds that might be coming out a bit too much in the mix. Then we have one of my favorite plugins, Infected Mushroom Pusher. This is a great plugin. It really helps just add a lot of width to your mix. It makes it sit like really well in your headphones. Then we have our limiter, which is like the final step. This is usually the foundation of any master. You always need a limiter to bring the sound up and make sure there's not too many dynamics that are throwing your mix off. So I'm going to let you guys listen to what this sounds like with the final step master off and with it on and you can just see how big of a difference this actually makes yeah i thought i told you that my heart is way too cold damn it'll push you to the side that's how it go oh, oh. 
can you tell me how you feel? Cause I need you, yeah, I need you the most Yeah, I need you the most Yeah, I need you the most I thought I told you this before, but I need you the most Yeah, I need you the most Yeah, I need you the most I thought I told you this before, but I need you the most all right, so let's head over to our master and actually turn the final step master back on and just listen to the difference. If you're wearing headphones, you'll be able to notice a lot or if you have monitors. But for the main part, it's going to be a little bit louder and it's just going to sound a lot better. Yeah, I thought I told you that my heart is way too cold. Damn, it'll push you to the side, that's how it go. Whoa, whoa. Can you tell me how you feel? Cause I need you, yeah, I need you the most Yeah, I need you the most Yeah, I need you the most I thought I told you this before But I need you the most Yeah, I need you the most Yeah, I need you the most I thought I told you this before But I need you the most all right, guys, and that is the end of the video. I pretty much showed you from A to B how to actually record an FL Studio, and I tried to include as much as I possibly could. If you guys do have any questions that I didn't cover in this, make sure to leave a comment. I'll try and answer each and every comment. But also, there is going to be a free version of this template down in the description below, so you can either download that before to follow along. But of course, if you want the full thing, that is available at my website, and I'll also have that link down below, as well as everything else that we use in this video. That's all I got for you guys for now, and I will see you guys in the next video. Deuces. Yeah, I thought I told you that my heart is way too cold Damn, it'll push you to the side, that's how it go oh, oh. Can you tell me how you feel? Cause I need you, yeah, I need you the most Yeah, I need you the most Yeah, I need you the most I thought I told you this before, but I need you the most Yeah, I need you the most Yeah, I need you the most I thought I told you this before, but I need you the most